Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Abdul Samad for On the Ground News, and today we want to speak about the issues between the Muslims and the uh, Sinhalis in Sri Lanka, which was uh, taking part in the recent weeks and months. And for this, inshallah, today our guest, uh, Muna Fatima Moyes, uh, she is from Kandy, Sri Lanka, and she's currently right now in Doha. She will help us to edu or she will educate us more about the issue and about the problems, uh, what was uh, taking part in uh, Kandy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, sister, we want to ask you first the question, uh, can you please tell us when did this problem originally begin? Uh, as we know, it is not a new problem, right? No, no, it's, it's, not, it's not a new problem, but what caused the riots this time, it happened about three weeks back. The trigger for that happened about three weeks back. Okay. The incident on the road between the, there were three uh, Muslim, uh, they were drunk. Uh, there, were, there were three guys who were drunk. Uh, they were three-wheeler drivers. And um, they got into some kind of altercation with another truck driver who was Sinhalese. So that went out of hand. And the Sinhalese guy got hurt. And he was in the hospital for about a week. So while he was in the hospital for a week, there was no issues or anything like that. It was fine. There was no problem or anything. Then a week later, he died. It's only when he died that all of this went out of control. Okay. So uh, what is the government doing about uh, extremist Buddhist preachers uh, online about this issue? Well, that's the sad part. They're not doing as much as we'd like them to do. Um, they, when when the riots first started this time, uh, we were all kind of disappointed because so many things were going on and there was no uh, proper authority or proper action taken. Then they introduced the state of emergency and then, you know, the Navy stepped in and uh, curfew was put on and, you know, things got a little better. And then they arrested some uh, extremist preachers. There was one guy called Amit Veera Singha. Uh, he has like a Facebook page and uh, he has a lot of followers and he, he talks a lot of hate speech. So they arrested him and a lot of others. But okay. they have arrested them. But we feel like um, the, the, what's, what's being done is like, it's not enough, you know, because we feel like there may be the, some of the hate preachers, they have some backing, maybe. Mm -hmm. By the I mean, there's government, a lot of you conspiracy mean? theory. Yeah, not that they are supporting them, but uh, it, it's just, I, we think that stronger action can be taken, but yeah, it's, it's, we feel like it's, it's not enough. They're still okay. out there. A lot of people were arrested, but there, some of them are still out there. Okay, and uh, what do you say about uh, during the days of the unrest, uh, the government uh, has dis disabled Facebook? Why do you think they did that? There was a lot of, for one thing, there was a lot of rumors going on. Like, let's say that some shops and hotels and places were burnt in one village. Then mm -hmm. people would say, oh, it's burnt in village one, two, three, four as well. And mm -hmm. two, three, and four would be a lie. And uh, people were coming up with lies just to go and create more unrest. So that's what they say. They say that, you know, they stopped social media for some time to... Uh, make sure that people don't spread unnecessary information that worked both ways it's true that uh, rumors did stop we did stop getting unnecessary messages but it also hurt people because it meant that normal people couldn't talk to get in touch with people who they really wanted to or they needed to and of course people who want to misuse information you know they just find a loophole or they just find a backwards way and i also believe that a lot of online businesses suffered at this time uh, mm -hmm. when uh, facebook and whatsapp was disabled so uh, whether it was a totally wise move i don't know um we okay. don't know we, okay. I, I can't say 100 percent yet okay and how is the situation right now did the did the situation calm down or is it still carrying on as yeah, you yeah. know the the, no, the no, international no, news don't speak about it uh, much 
yeah now now nothing is going on and like things are back to normal like uh, so this was going on for about four or five days and then you know the state of emergency was called the navy came in and things like that and curfew was put on and it got the all the riots stopped yes. but you see the damage is done now now it's like um, you know when a muslim wants to go to a singalese shop they're scared so they avoid it or a singalese person would avoid to go to a muslim i'm talking about the areas where the riots happen right like yes. Kandy, for example yeah so right. i i i I, uh, I was in doha and then i came to Kandy last week so when i came i was like um i when i came and i listened to what people were saying people were like uh, oh better to avoid um, uh, buying vegetables maybe at that shop because you know he may be you know you know that kind of animosity yes, and yes. fear and distrust has been has been spread now so, mm -hmm. so there there is a wide majority of people who think that you know we should just go back to normal and we should we shouldn't let the hate guys win uh, and all but uh, that feeling has been spread so i think the challenge now is to uh, regain that trust because that that uh, because in some places where these riots happen in certain places they say uh, uh, the mobs came from outside they weren't people from the village who did the actual attacking and looting and burning of shops and houses but in some places they say that there were people who these we met every day on a daily basis who would come to shops and all and mm -hmm. they were also involved in these uh, in this burning and looting so now people have this major trust issue Okay, I understand. Okay, then uh, we want to thank you, Sister Muna Fatima Moyes, uh, to, to help us educate about this uh, issue, about the problems in Sri Lanka. We thank you for your time. And uh, I am Abdul Samad for Underground News. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.